Hey, what's up and welcome back. We're back down in the basement today and I'm going to be working on two projects. The first thing we're doing is a real quick project. We're building what we call a maggot bucket. Meredith and I went on vacation uh, last week. We went down to Palm Springs. Awesome trip. But when we came back, we found out that one of our refrigerators had gone out over that time. And unfortunately, a lot of the meat that we had in the freezer has spoiled. Now chickens can eat meat, but this seems a little bit spoiled beyond what I want to give them. I don't want to get our chickens sick. So instead what we're going to do is build this thing called a maggot bucket. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow flies to get, to, to get access to this meat, help to break that down. They're going to lay their eggs in it, the maggots hatch out and start to eat the meat. And then when they're full and developed, uh, they're going to crawl out of holes into the bucket and the, the chickens are going to be able to get to them. So we're going to turn this unsanitary meat into fresh insect protein for our chickens to get. For the second project, I've got to build up another brooder. We're getting 29 more chicks uh, in about a week. These chicks are all what they call bantams. And bantams are a small variety of chicken. Um, we're getting two varieties. We're getting 19 silkies and 10 frizzles. These are going to be the chickens that we use in our chicken moat that you guys saw, uh, saw me talking about in the last garden video. So I figured a second brooder could be nice. I was at Ace the other day and I found these nice big blue tubs. They were only like 30 bucks, so I think that's going to be a great option. They're big enough that uh, I think they'll be able to handle all these chicks at least until one of the batches gets big enough that we can, we can divide if we need to. Now the lid of the tub comes with this little indent marked out on it. So my plan is to just get a razor knife and run it along the inside until we can pop this off. And then we'll use some wood to reinforce the edge and get a little bit of chicken screen going in the front. Uh, maybe even do a little brace bar across here so that we can attach a heat lamp and shine that down into it. But before we get into the brooder, let's get started on the maggot bucket. This is a really simple project. All you're going to need is a drill and a bucket. No real rhyme or reason behind it. You're just going to come through and you're going to Swiss cheese the heck out of the, out of the bin here. Now you want to think when you're putting the holes into your bucket, you want something that's going to be large enough that the maggots are going to be able to get out of your bucket, but not so large that the chickens are going to be able to pull all of your material out. I've decided to use a quarter inch drill bit for this project. I'm only going about halfway up the bucket. As I imagine, I don't want this thing entirely full of rotting material. Um, so we're just doing it up about this far. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple larger holes at the top. This way the, the adult flies are going to have an easy time getting in and getting access to the, to the material for them to eat. Larger holes in the top, smaller holes in the bottom. Now it's time to start getting the new brooder set up. Top is off. Let's give it a quick bit of sandpaper. Now we've got to get some chicken wire fashioned to the top.
So the final project, we have our frame which is underneath and has the chicken wire secured to it on the top side and then that is being held in place by these two strips of 2x4 here so the, the lid is sandwiched in between those so it's not going to go up or down uh, and then these are going to allow us to attach a heat lamp like so and kind of adjust our angle to point it down I'm hoping that since this is so well enclosed that the temperature will get heated up inside it pretty well. Let's jump back over to the maggot bucket. I'm going to go put some material in there so that we can attract the flies. We'll build a little tripod to hang it from and we'll get it set up out with the chickens. So we put a little bit of straw down in the bottom. This is hopefully going to help absorb a bit of the smell. I'm going to unwrap the meat outside. First thing I want to do is get the tripod made so that we've got something to hang on. I've got some sticks that I'm going to reclaim uh, from a project that my friend Ian and I were working on. We've been cutting down some locust trees that were growing in the septic system uh, when we bought the property. They're great trees, but the roots are starting to invade the septic line and that's going to be about a $10,000 fix. Uh, if we have to do something about that. So uh, that's not gonna work. So uh, we're having to cut those trees down, but I'm trying to do as much as I can with the wood that we salvaged from them. So uh, we've got a bunch of sticks left over that were too big for me to fit in our wood chipper. So I'm gonna take a look through that and see if we can find any that'll work for our tripod. All right, I should be able to make these work. Now let's go get some of this gnarly meat. Yeah, I don't know how long this fridge has been out. We just found out after we got back from our vacation, so it may have been out longer than that. We haven't used it in a couple weeks. Such a bummer. Oh, that's disgusting. So, here's our rotted meat. I'm gonna put some more straw over the top of it. Again, just to help with the smell. Oh, <laughs> yeah, definitely need something to help with the smell. But that smell is going to attract the maggots, and then the maggots are. Or, the smell is what's going to attract the flies, and the flies are going to lay their eggs, which will turn into the maggots, and then the maggots are going to turn that disgusting, sickening mess into fresh insect protein for our chickens that they'll be able to peck at and play with for, for a long time. So, I gotta get some more straw down on the top of that. The last thing that I need is a lid. We don't want rainwater getting into this. And that's why we've got the larger holes for the flies to get in on the side so that it won't let as much rainwater in. Betty's already excited to get in at it. Since it's raining, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys here and I'll let you watch from a distance. Well, the maggot bucket's up and it looks like the birds are already having fun with it. Lastly, let's go ahead and finish getting the brooder set up. We're back out with the rest of the chicks. Uh, I've let it get pretty messy out in here over the last, oh, since we bought the place. This has definitely been just kind of, we don't have a place for it, so let's put it out in here. Um, but it's gotten a little too chaotic for that even. So, I've got to tidy up just a little bit so that we can fit this brooder in here.
So, next week when the chicks come, we'll do another video update so that you guys can see how they adjust to the new brooder. And we'll also go out and check on the new maggot bucket and see how that's doing. Thanks as always for checking in. You guys have an awesome day, and I'll catch you around next time.